Hello everyone, Phil480 here and welcome to my review of my new helmet which is a Caberg Ego. This is the third Caberg I've owned and I quite like Caberg and I'm going to show you a couple of reasons why. So yeah, a couple of reasons why I uh, do like Caberg is uh, one, because of their quite easy to use uh, visor quick release system which I can't really see what I'm doing here so I'm just going to have to hope the camera picks it up. In fact, I can if I look there. So uh, yeah, they have the quick uh, this like quick release visor system, so uh, it's quite easy to take off for uh, cleaning or replacing and stuff. So it's just a case of lining the two arrows up. I'm not going to show you fully how to do it. Uh, it's a bit difficult doing this wheel back to front. Uh, this isn't the helmet I'm reviewing, by the way. This is my one of my old ones. So yeah, you line the two arrows up and then you push that lever in, and then the visor, visor pops off. Uh, so yeah, quite simple, quite a simple uh, release mechanism there, rather than having to faff with any tools and things like that, like some helmets do. Another reason why I quite like the Caberg is the um, the quick release chin strap, which you just pull the thing there, and it's just like a ratchety system type of thing, and yeah, dead easy to get on and off. As I will now demonstrate, this by the way is my original helmet, well it's the first helmet I was using when I started doing these videos on YouTube. This is a Cabo Conda flip front, obviously. So yeah, goes uh, quite easy, just put it on, done. And then to take it off you just pull that there and it's off. And uh, yeah, there, well, all the Cabo helmets I've had so far, I've had that uh, quick release system which is quite useful really. Anyway. So yeah, that's the uh, the Conda which I uh, first started out with here on on YouTube. There's nothing actually wrong with this other than it's just it got to the age where it needed replacing. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Might cut it in half for a laugh. I don't know. That's for a future project. Now just quickly before we get onto the the main event, the main helmet. This is obviously my old one, the Hyper X, which I did a review on. And you see, that's the damage I had from my little. Uh, my little incident with that van the other week, and the reason why I've got a new helmet. Um, the only, this is a brilliant helmet, as you've seen in my original video. In fact, I'll put a link in the description so you can uh, see a review for this this helmet. Uh, obviously, it's got the removable chin piece and all that, and then the sun visor. The only issue I've really had with this is the sun visor. I don't know if it's the curvature of it or just my eyes, but whenever I have the sun visor down on this, it strains my eyes, it feels really weird, it's like like when you put somebody else's glasses on or something like that, you just get that strain. Um, that's the only issue I've had with it. Um, but no, other than that, it is a good helmet. So on to the main feature then. This is my new one, the Caberg Ego, as it says there. I do quite like this helmet, I've been using it for a couple of weeks. It is pretty good value for money. Um, now, I didn't go searching for this model specifically, I just put in my search parameters on uh, that well-known uh, biker supply place online, and um, this is one that came up. I basically put in my price range, put in the features I wanted, which was basically a full-face helmet with an internal sun visor and a pin lock, and arranged it by highest rated first rather than lowest price first, because obviously you can, you can buy cheap helmets and yeah, they'll be okay. You kind of get what you pay for. Um, but surprisingly, this was the highest rated helmet within the search parameters I'd put in. And it was also one of the cheapest as well. Now, I'm not sure why, uh, because when I bought this a couple of weeks ago, it was £117 thereabouts. Now, when I've just looked today, just before uh, filming this video, the price has jumped back up to £135. So I'm not sure whether there was a special offer on at the time or anything like that, but yeah, it was uh, a little bit uh, cheaper than most others at the time. Anyway, the main reason I got this was because of some of the other features. Obviously, this has the uh, the, the usual Caberg um, features, which I mentioned earlier, such as the quick-release visor system on here and also the quick-release chin strap, like most of them have. Nice and easy. That's what I like. Um, but yeah, the main, the main feature... Uh, that I like with this helmet is on the top here there's this strange looking area and that 
is the sunroof. Now that's brilliant because my head gets very hot in any helmet really. Well, just any time. I mean, I'm starting to sweat now probably because of this light that I've got on. Um, but yeah, I, I am generally um, quite a warm person. So yeah, usually these um, keeping cool in motorcycle gear is a big issue for me. I really do struggle. But yeah, if I shine the light through the top here, so yeah, you can see that is a pretty large ventilation area. That was the main feature that attracted me to this helmet. And uh, the other one, of course, is it does have a pinlock visor, which uh, I've never had a pinlock before. Um, obviously, it's not really the right sort of time of year to be trying this out. I did try and make it steam up, and I couldn't. Uh, but as you know, with new helmets, they have an anti-fog layer usually anyway uh, on the standard visor. So it would be difficult to start with um, until that wears off. This one comes with a free clear pinlock insert, which I've put in, as you can see. In there which is pretty good because usually I think you pay I don't know what 40 quid for a pinlock insert so uh, yeah it comes with one for free so yeah good value for money there so yeah the ventilation on this helmet is a uh, quite a big selling point uh, you've got the one on the top there that I've just shown you and then you also have uh, the one at the front here which does have a, uh, a vent that you can uh, open and close with on the bottom there And then at the back of the helmet, there's the uh, the two um, exhaust ports, shall we call them? Exhaust ports. Exhaust ports. Yes. Star Wars reference fee there. So yeah, as for wind noise, it's actually um, quite well shielded, I think, from uh, from the wind, certainly compared to my HyperX. Uh, so you've got this piece at the front here, which uh, helps deflect the wind. And there's this flap under here. And uh, just the general sort of uh, ventilation around the collar there. Uh, it seems quite good. Did I say ventilation? I meant wind protection. Yeah, you know what I meant anyway. That's what it is. Uh, while I've got it upside down, the lining is fully removable and washable. So once it gets all stinky, you can pull it all out, wash it, and uh, put it back in its place, which is good. Uh, and yes, another uh, one of the main features of this helmet, which uh, I do like, which uh, I've had on uh, my last three helmets now, is the internal sun visor. Now I don't get the same problem with this one as I do with the HyperX. For some reason the one on the HyperX, it just makes my eyes strain. I don't know why. As for um, yeah, sound with microphones inside there and stuff, um, I'm not having much of an issue with sound. Um, I did have my microphone placed. I can show you this. Let's see how we can see. I did have it just out here behind the chin guard and outside of the padding and uh, it was still picking up quite a bit of wind noise once I got sort of above 40 it would anything um, above 40 then it would uh, start to distort the microphone uh, so what I've done now is I've put the microphone inside the cheek padding which I did try before on the HyperX I put it into the uh, little cutout for the Bluetooth system um, but it was too muffled there but this one it is um, I've put the microphone within the cheek padding um, and that seems to be doing quite well at um, keeping the wind noise down but keeping my voice clear and not muffled. Uh, wearing the helmet, it's very comfortable actually. Um, I thought going back to a full face might be a little bit uncomfortable and claustrophobic because especially compared with the HyperX with the amount of visibility you get out of that, it's amazing. Uh, but this one obviously just a normal full face which um, it's not too bad actually once you sort of get used to um, the letterbox view once again. But yeah, I think I, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, i sticking with full faces again, mainly because of the whole safety aspects of it and things. So, all that being said, I can agree with all the reviews I've read so far online, which are all pretty good. Um, this is a good helmet, good value for money, and uh, some brilliant features in there. So if you're thinking of getting one, uh, if you've got any questions to ask, which I haven't already covered in this review, then uh, do feel free to leave me a comment, and I'll do my best to um, respond to that and hopefully answer your questions. Thank you for watching everybody, I'll see you again soon, ride safe.